And welcome to Last Spring Church. Hey, if you could do me a favor and everybody stand up. And if you could kind of move to the center and come forward a little bit. There'll be others coming in in just a few minutes and fill up the, the edges. And uh, we so much appreciate you being here at church. How many of you could agree with David in the Bible when he said, I was glad when they said unto me, let's go to the house of the Lord. Man. I'm just going to give away a little secret today. Somebody is going to get really blessed today. We've got something very special, an illustration in the message that somebody is going to be saying, I'm glad I went to Life Spring Church. But even more important than that, you're going to be blessed by the presence of the Lord. Because in God's presence, there's fullness of joy, the Bible says. So we want to welcome you today. We want to welcome you if you're watching on Facebook or YouTube. Uh, also, uh, at, at some people are at home or traveling. We welcome you to our uh, congregation. And uh, we just uh, thank you so much for joining us. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word says that where two or three are gathered in your name, that Jesus, you're right in the midst of us. And we thank you, Lord, because when we find you, we find healing. When we find you, we find blessings. When we find you, we find wisdom. When we find you, we find the answers to all of our prayers and all of our needs. And we thank you so much. We know that you love us so much. And we want to love you back as we worship you today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our rock, the only solid ground The nations rise and fall Kingdoms once strong, now shaken We trust forever in your name The name of Jesus We trust the name of Jesus You are the only king forever, mighty God, we lift you higher. You are the only king forever, forevermore. You are victorious, you are the only king forever, mighty God, we lift you higher. You are the only king forever, forevermore. You are victorious. Unmatched in all your wisdom, in love and justice you will reign. And every knee will bow. We bring our expectations, our hope is anchored in your name. In the name of Jesus. King forever, mighty God, we lift you higher. You are the only King forever, forevermore. You are victorious. You are the only King forever, mighty God, we lift you higher. You are the only King forever, forevermore. You are victorious. High, we lift 
on the king forever Mighty God we lift you higher You are the only king forever Forevermore You are victorious You are the only king forever Mighty God we lift you higher You are the only king forever Forevermore You are victorious
stop working You never stop, you never stop working Even when I don't see it, you're working Even when I don't feel it, you're working You never stop, you never stop working You never stop, you never stop working Even when I don't see it, you're working Even when I don't feel it, you're working You never stop Stop, you never stop working Even when I don't see it, you're working Even when I don't feel it, you're working You never stop, you never stop working You never stop, you never stop working We make a miracle worker So uh, this morning we are celebrating and praise and worship, um, and you know our first song, we're we're talking about who God is. He's the only King forever. God, the Creator of the universe, um, uh, the 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 one who who laid His life down for us. Uh, second song is Waymaker. We're talking about what God does. So we're talking about who we're, we're singing and praising God for for who He is and what He does, and we're going to sing about victory in Christ and I want to say if you don't know who God is and you don't know what he does you cannot take part in his victory his victory comes his ultimate victory is that we spend eternity with him and his ultimate victory took place on the cross it was on the cross when Jesus said it is finished he was done now we don't feel like we're done we 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 walk through this life and we we continue to uh, uh, we go through things with his help we go through things um, uh, but God you know uh, I love it when anybody says uh, uh, we know the end of the story we read the back of the book first we know the we know the end of the story and as Rex has been pastor Rex has been talking about for the last few weeks finding freedom that freedom the ultimate freedom comes in our relationship with Jesus Christ and uh, that's the start that's the very start so if you know Jesus then you're our, you've, you've already got that part taken care of if you don't know Jesus we're gonna invite you to know him 
Uh, there's not a day that you'll leave LifeSpring without that opportunity. Um, but we want you to understand that freedom takes place. Worship and our praise to Him is what begins that freedom uh, for the for the gift, free gift that He's given us. darkness falls it won't prevail cause the God I serve knows only how to try you my God will never fail my God will never fail I'm gonna see your victory I'm gonna see your victory for the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. Oh. There's power in the mighty name of Jesus. Every war he wages, he will win. I'm not backing down from many giants. Cause I know how the story is. I know how the story is. Victory for the battle belongs to 
you may be seated as we continue to worship today. I was running through a little uh, like football dome there. Um, anyways, hey, it is great to see you guys here today. Uh, congratulations for making it here on Sunday. Some of our friends did not, so you guys are the lucky winners today. Um, hey, if you are an honored guest today, we would love to get to know you. We'd love to talk with you, find out how we can better serve your needs as a church. If you would meet with our head pastor right back there in that next step room. Christy, wave at everybody right back there. That door right there next to her. Um, that's going to be the door we meet at. Uh, if we can go back there, we have a gift for you. We'd love to get to know you, okay? Uh, secondly, how many of us know this church is all about our community, how we can serve our community, how we can better our community, how we can show Christ to our community? So this October 30th, we have a chance for you to come out, to volunteer, serve with us. We're serving the community some, uh, some candy. We're having a great Halloween outreach. Yeah, yeah, heck yeah. Um, I'm not sure on a time yet, but I know it's on October 30th. 3.30, look at that. All I had to do was turn around. Uh, so it's at Breezy Hill, the park at Breezy Hill, 3.30. Please be there at 3.30, is that correct? At 3 o'clock for volunteers, excuse me. If you cannot make it, however, we have another chance for you to serve your community. We need massive amounts of candy. As you know, we're serving an entire neighborhood, an entire community. Uh, they depend on us, they rely on us, so if we could have you guys donate candy, that would be phenomenal. Let's serve our community together yeah. and be together on this. Yeah. Um, also, uh, we do not have youth this week since I'm the youth pastor. I'm going to go ahead and just do my own little spiel up here. But if you are a youth, we would love to get to know you. On October 30th, that night actually, we're doing a car pumpkin carving contest and we're also doing a costume party. Show up, be there, be cool, be cool, you know. I'll be, uh, I might be dressed as Blue's Clues, who knows. Um, <laughs> we'll see huh? oh we also do have a cool if you're a youth meet with me afterwards I'll show you the coolest room in this entire church not coolest as in cold but coolest as in I'm so fly you know for some of you guys that are 40 and up um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, so, yeah I know I know that's what I said so anyways um, tithe and offering um, I just want to share with you guys a little testimony on my, my part here. I always have a bunch of testimonies on Tithe. So uh, we, we got lovely fans out here installed for our kids' ministry. Uh, thank you, George Guzman. I saw you here today. I know that. Thank you for your time and your effort you put in there. We helped head the whole project. We appreciate that. Um, I was telling Maddie, I was like, you know, I really feel like it's, God is telling us we need to pay for something out there. We need to pay for the fans, something, or donate something that we can out there. And okay, she said, okay, you know, pretty much when it comes to finances, Maddie just, she just makes all the money, I just spend it all, so. Uh, <laughs> so, anyways, she, uh, she said, okay, okay, you know, it's fine. We, we go out there, so we, we decided what we could do together was $600. $600, we'll put it down, that's fine. It didn't cover the whole cost, but it covered some. And we were, we were happy that God told us to do that, and we were more than happy to follow God's word on that. Not more than two weeks later, uh, her job tells her, hey, so a bit of an issue here. It's a little weird. We normally give you your bonus over a span of a year, a couple months, something like that. Um, we're just going to give it all to you in one lump sum, and it's actually $6,000. Exactly 10 times what, <laughs> what we tied. So, I mean, God is so good. God will never fail you. God, you can never outgive God, and that is a promise. I have a, a bank account to guarantee it, okay? So if we can all, <laughs> if we can all bow our head, close our eyes. Lord, we just come before you today, God, and we just want to say thank you, Lord. Lord, thank you for your blessings, God. Thank you for just everything you're able to give us. God, we thank you that you brought us all here today to hear a wonderful word, a wonderful message from our lovely head pastor. 
God, we pray that we accept this word. Pray that you bless the giver. Bless everyone here. God, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right, Pastor Woo! How about, how about my son, who I'm well pleased right there, Brennan? He's, uh, he's kind of his own show, isn't he? I mean, you know, just uh, I love him, love him. Love my kids, love my grandkids. Uh, in fact, I was, I was going to try to put a picture of my grandkids in this message, but I just couldn't burden with Amy with one more thing to do on the computer, you know. But hey, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we're so thankful for this day you've given us. This is the day you have made, and we choose to rejoice in it and be glad. Lord, uh, we thank you for all the blessings we have. God, we live in the, in the greatest country in the world. And I believe in the greatest state in America. There may be others that differ, but that's okay, Lord. I've been born here, bred here, native Texan. And I uh, thank you for all of the blessings. I thank you for our, uh, our governor and our leaders and, and everybody, uh, Lord. And we lift them up and we pray for them, uh, Lord. And we uh, thank you and we honor their authority. And we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, so a couple weeks ago, uh, we did a message in this series. It's about getting free. How many of you know that God wants us to find Him? That's first base. Find God. Then second base is find freedom. Because a lot of people have strongholds and bondages and struggles and areas of weakness and sins and things that we just need to get the victory over, right? And I say we. Because I've told you in some of these messages and I've confessed some of these strongholds that I battle and God has given me the victory over, right? And it's not easy to, to tell you those things. I'm not proud of those things. And in fact, almost every message each week, I, I think I can kind of relate to that because I, I think I've, I've, uh, I've, I've been in that stronghold before. And so I began this series a few weeks ago. Two weeks ago, we spoke about pride, the pride of life, and we had a tremendous uh, altar call, and I, I thank you so much for letting God work in your heart and your spirit. Last week was an even tougher message on the lust of the flesh. That wasn't easy to preach. This week is going to be even harder to preach this message. It's on the lust of the eyes, but it's called the first open door, and here's why it's called the first open door, because I'm going to share with you the first open door that mankind, Adam and Eve, opened to the enemy and allowed him in. Now, the first open door was, happened in heaven. It was Lucifer, and it was pride. We talked about that. But the first open door that mankind opened for the enemy to come in to the garden in that case was the lust of the eyes. And I'm, I'm going to share that. And, uh, but let's look at a couple scriptures because this whole series is based on this scripture, John 8, 36. So if the Son, Jesus Christ, sets you free, you are truly free. And so we need to find God. We need to find freedom. That's like second base. And then third base, this is our four pillars of our church, is to uh, find purpose. And then the home run is to make a difference with your purpose, right? And so... Uh, we want God to set us free. And the reason why a lot of Christians, uh, we can't find our purpose or, fi or be effective and make a difference is because we're still battling a stronghold in our life that's got us chained to our past or to a sin or to uh, an experience. And how many of you know, though, God's the chain breaker? God's the one that sets us free. And He wants to set us free if we'll just allow Him to. And so... This uh, next verse, 1 John 2, is, is the last three weeks, basically. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but it is of the world. In other words, if you could picture a gnarly tree, and we'll call it the sin tree, the three roots of the tree would be the pride of life, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes. And, 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 and as it gnarls up in the trunk and branches off into different sins, I mean, you name the sin, you know, it, it all comes back to those three right there. And so we've been talking about in this series that if we're not careful, 
not on purpose, but we can open a door to the enemy and, 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 and God allows it because God is a God of free will. Amen? He's not a, a puppet master controlling our every... He allows us to make mistakes. He allows us to do the right thing. He allows us to do the wrong thing and learn from it. But God allows free will and so as a result, sometimes the enemy comes in and establishes a stronghold in our life. So that's what we're talking about in today specifically, the lust of the eyes. And the lust of the eyes manifests in three ways. Okay, there's three, three ways mainly that the lust of the eyes manifest. And the first way is in the area of greed. Greed. Anybody ever been a little greedy? Oh, come on. Some, some of y'all are... You don't have to put your hand up. Thank you, Robert. I saw both hands and both feet up. I don't know how you did that. <laughs> we can, it, it's human nature. We can get a little greed. It's a manifestation of the lust of the eyes. In other words, I want something so bad that I'm willing to sacrifice some of my finances or some of my principles to get that. Ladies, how many times... Has it been that irresistible pair of shoes? Be honest. <laughs> oh, I wasn't looking for hands. But, no, you know, seriously. It can be anything. It can be, it can be you know, it can be a barbecue grill. It can be a new house. It can be a, 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 and there's nothing wrong with those things. It can be a big screen TV. There's nothing wrong with those things. Where it becomes wrong is when we allow greed to take over and violate our biblical principles or our financial principles that God has taught us. So I'm going to show you an example of greed and go all the way back to Adam and Eve. Genesis 3. And as we look at the scripture, we know the story, right? That God said, hey, I've created this beautiful garden for you, Adam and Eve. And I have this perfect plan for you. All you got to do, you can eat of any of the fruit of this beautiful garden. Enjoy the garden. Talk to the animals, because back then I think the animals could talk. I'll show you that here in a second. And, uh, you know, but don't eat of these two trees in the middle, the tree of knowledge of good and evil or the tree of life. Don't eat, there, there's two trees in the garden in the middle that are mine. Don't touch them. Are you with me so far? Anybody sound familiar? Yeah. And so, pick up there. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, which is weird, first of all, because the Bible says two things about this story. One is that the snake came walking up to Eve, which is kind of weird. Can you picture like a six-foot-long snake just, you know, kind of walking up and saying, hey, Eve, how's it going? You know, I think that's... He probably had a British accent. Hey, Eve, how are you? Yeah. And uh, anyway... He said to the woman, has God indeed said, you know, has God indeed said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Do you notice the first thing that the devil did is he challenged the word of God? God had spoken a word, don't touch these two trees. And, and the uh, first thing the devil does, comes up and says, hey, did he really say that? And still to this day, the devil will try to put doubts in our mind and say, does it really say that in the Word? And we justify our own sins, don't we? We rationalize sometimes. He said, did he really say, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said, we may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but except the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God said, you shall not eat it. You shall not touch it, or you're going to die. Isn't that what God said? Yeah, that's what God said. You don't touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said to the woman, you're not going to die. Again, casting doubt on God's word. You're not going to die. And God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes, we're talking about the lust of the eyes, will be opened, and you will be like God knowing good and evil. And then the next verse says, so when the woman saw that the tree, lust of the eyes, was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise, 
In other words, the devil had somehow convinced her that this tree is better than any other tree in the garden. And she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave it to her wimpy husband, Adam, who had he been a real man of God, would have stood up as soon as he saw the devil talking and saying things that doubt the word of God and say, get out of my house. Men, listen up. If do you need to tell the devil, get out of my house. I pray every day that prayer. Devil, get out of my house. In fact, you're not allowed in my house, devil. And I set boundaries of the blood of Jesus around my house, protective barriers. And my poor neighbors sometimes get bounce-offs of the devil attack. And, and, no, the devil still attacks. But you set boundaries and you tell him when he gets in your mind, when he gets in your wife's mind or your kid's mind or your spouse's mind, you can tell him, get out of my house. You're not allowed here. And if a man will do his duty, then we'll have a lot happier homes. Amen? Ah, oh, a few of you like that. Okay, I'll keep going. And so she, uh, she gave it to her husband and he ate. He was standing there all along, listening to the conversation, being quiet, being passive, not uh, protecting his home. And what a lot of people don't know is in Genesis 2, 9, it says, out of the ground the Lord God made every tree grow that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. So when Satan was saying, hey, this tree right here is better than them all, in fact, God made all the trees desirable to the eyes. And he said, you can have all these trees. And it was also in the midst of the garden, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, the Bible says. So here's the thing. And I'm going to preach on a very difficult example that over 80%, in fact, some studies show up to 90% of Christians today leave this door open. And when I say it, there's going to be a holy hush on the audience. Because what, I, what I'm about to say over, like I say, 80 to 90% of Christians today do not practice the biblical principle of tithing. Why? Because of the lust of the eyes, and I'm going to give you three reasons why Christians, why we do these things, and I say we because I'm a Christian, but I'm a one that struggled with this in my teenage years and my early 20s and I can tell you that they were the worst years of my life because here's what God does when you open a door to the enemy he he just says okay if you don't want me to be involved and he just kinda you know looks the other way and the devil comes in and plays havoc in your home maybe maybe you've closed every door that we've talked about in this series, or maybe there's not, you can't think of one door that's open in your life, but if this door is open, I promise you the devil will come in. And I'm speaking from experience, but I remember the day, and it, right before I got married to my beautiful wife, Amy, which is such a blessing and such a godsend, aren't y'all thankful for my wife? She's the glue that holds this church together. You know, uh, my aunt told me a long time ago, she's from New Zealand, and she has an accent. And she said, Amy, do you know why you married Rex? And she goes, no, why, Valme? She said, because you are here to straighten him out. <laughs> and Rex, do you know why you married Amy? And I said, why, Valme? And she said, to loosen her up. You know. <laughs> so we make a good team. You know, but the best way to defeat greed is to practice the principle of tithing. And, and it's true. And some of you are going to love this message and some of you just tune me out. I hope you didn't just turn me off on the Facebook or YouTube or wherever. But I want you to listen because this principle changed my life. And when I decided to put God first, and I hear this story over and over and over. I'm going to share one at the end with you that when they decided to do this principle, then it changed their life forever uh, because, because of the scriptures I'm going to share with you. But the best way to defeat greed is to practice principle tithing. In case you don't know, in case you're new to Christianity or you're new to the church or you've never, you're not familiar with the principle of tithing, I have had people say, 
I tithe, and I say, oh, okay, well, well you know, and, but I need prayer for my finances, okay? And they say, yeah, what, I, I, uh, I pay all my bills, I spend all my money, and whatever's left over, I give 10% of that to God. That is not tithing, but let me share what tithing is, okay? Just so you know, tithe means tenth, a tenth, 10%. 10%. So let me just kind of get a little audience interaction. Will you help me with this? So uh, how many plagues were there to test Pharaoh? 10. Right. Can I hear you say 10? Okay. Because the, I'm going to show you all through the Bible, the scripture, that the number 10 represents a responsibility or a test. Okay. So 10 plagues to test Pharaoh. How many commandments were given to Moses? Right. How many times did God test Israel when they were wandering in the wilderness? Yeah. Right. How many times were Jacob's wages changed? Is it five, Ten. <laughs> Y'all are fading off on me. Come on. How many times was Daniel tested? Yeah. Good. How many virgins were tested in Matthew 25? Yeah. How many days of testing are mentioned in Revelation? Yeah. How many disciples were there? Yeah. No, there were 12. There were 12. I was testing you. I was just testing. There were 12. But maybe he got you there. So I want to show you what it means to actually tithe. And I have a, a great example for you that you're going to love. Somebody's going to really love it. But uh, I want you, uh, if you want to look at Exodus 13, we see that God says, Then the Lord spoke to Moses saying, Consecrate to me or set apart all the firstborn. Whatever opens the womb among the children of Israel, both of man and and beast. It is, what does he say? It is mine. This is called the principle of the first fruits. In other words, that if a farmer was raising some crops, the first vegetables that came up, the Bible says they were to bring that as a tithe to the temple, and then they could eat off of the rest of the crops, and God would bless the rest. Now, in our mind, we think, man, if I make $1,000 a week and I give God $100, i am only going to be able to live off $900. Is that right? Is that, is that, that's what man's mind says. But God says, if you'll trust me with the 100 that's already mine, I will take it and multiply it like I did those five loaves and two fishes, and I'll show you great and mighty things you don't even know about. And Ephesians 3.20 says, I'll give you things that blow your mind that you can't even imagine. Right? And it's true. I mean, there's testimony after testimony after testimony, testimony in this church of people who have practiced this principle and have been blessed. And it goes beyond just finances, right? And so uh, this is what the Bible said in Exodus 13. Look at Exodus 23. Again, first, the first of the first fruits of your land you shall bring into the house of the Lord your God. You shall not a boil a young goat in its mother's milk. So anybody that was tempted to do that today. Uh, <laughs> no, but that first part is what I want. <laughs> you should bring the first of the first fruits of the land. Bring it to the house of the Lord. Again, first fruits. How about, uh, before we go on, I want to illustrate this. So, Amy, if you can hand me that bucket right there. We gave you all a ticket. Um, and let's see here. We gave you all a ticket as you came to church. And since, since Danielle is just sitting over here, interpreting. Danielle, can you use a free hand to draw a ticket? You're hoping you draw your own, right? Okay. Now, I do, these, I do this ticket thing so that nobody says, oh, it was rigged. She just randomly started up and drew this ticket. We don't know who has this ticket. But if I call this ticket out, and nobody answers. It's probably a children's worker back there because I gave all of them a ticket too. So if, if nobody responds in about 10 seconds, and you don't even know what the prize is yet, but believe me, you're going to want it. It is, of course, everybody has seven, three, three. You're getting excited. <laughs> then five, zero, five. Who is it? Michael. It's Michael. Can you go get him? Yeah. Michael. Oh, wow. Well, Krista, you're going to love this. She, she, he gave her the ticket. So, now, now, just so we know she's not telling a fib, you, nobody else has that ticket. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Bring him down here because I need him to illustrate something 
with me and for me about this principle of first fruits. Okay? If you can relieve him, Krista, can you... Outside. He's outside. Okay. Well, Krista, can you come up and be in his place? Because Krista is his wife. Yay. In case you don't know, they're married. So the Bible says, the Bible says the two shall become one. So Krista, come on up here. Oh, no, Krista. I want no Krista. So you can tell she's a wife. She knows how to give out orders, huh? Wow. You know, like Michael Dennis. The man with two first names, Michael Dennis. Come on up. Michael Wayne Dennis. Michael, let me give you this. Michael, we're talking about the principle of tithing. All right. So right here, I feel like I'm on let's make a deal, you know? I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten Benjamins. That's $100 bills. And so, Michael, how much money is that? Okay, good. You're good at math. I'm glad. Yeah, it's on. It's on. Oh, is it not on? Thank you, Brennan. Okay, it'll come on in a second. Give it a second. Okay, good. Michael, if... if God was to bless you with this thousand dollars right here. How much of it would be his in the tithe? At least one, but I would probably end up giving another to somebody who needs it. Okay, but, but you would say that at least one at is least. 10%. Yeah. That's 10% right. of all the money that comes in, right? Right. So, but which one is it? Doesn't matter. Oh, it does. We're the teaching a print. Hey, see, he remembers. Did you hear what he said? Oh, then it would be this one. You the that first one. one. <laughs> Which one is God's? It's the first one that comes in. That's the first fruits. That's the scriptures we're reading. The, first, the, the principle of the first fruit applies all through the New Testament. And if you're tempted to say, tithing is not in the New Testament, it's mentioned eight times. And it's mentioned by Jesus himself, the Son of God, that says you ought to be doing it. That's good enough for me. So if somebody says to you, no, it's not in the New Testament, it's the Old Testament, it was before, it was, it was before the law, I'm going to show you where it was with Cain and Abel. Right. But $100 belongs to God. So to continue our illustration, you don't give the tithe. The Bible, all the scriptures about it says you bring the tithe. Right. Why does it say that? Because God says you can't give what's not yours. <laughs> So you bring the tithe. It would be like if I went out of town and Michael said, hey, Rex, can I borrow your truck? I need to put mine in the shop and I want to borrow the truck. And I'd say, okay. And I went out. Me and Amy went on vacation. We came back and Michael said, uh, Rex, I've prayed about it and I've decided to give you back your truck. <laughs> be like, Michael, do you need medication? Because that truck is mine. And I loaned it to you, and you're bringing it back to me. And that's the same with the tithe. It's already God's. It says it's His. And we get the privilege of every week we take a test. When we receive our paycheck, I can return it back to God. Right. Just like He can return the truck. I don't know if you need the truck or not, but you can... I'll borrow you can, it. You borrow it? Okay. <laughs> well, here you can buy yourself maybe a used truck with that. Thanks, sir. God bless you. Thanks. Thank you for teaching the children. Thank you for your service. And I, in case you're... In case you're wondering about that little... Now, who wants to come next week to church? I'm not saying it's going to be something like that, but, but it, it, it's, 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 uh, it's just something that God put in my heart to do, and that didn't come out of the church's money. That, that came out of this wallet right here. <laughs> so, and I'm not saying that to, to get praise. I just don't want you to think, man, they're just spending money left and right because we are very frugal here at the church. Uh, but that's just an example. So... Uh, I want to go on to the, well, let me, let me tell you the story of Cain and Abel to show you the, the first fruit again. If you look at Genesis chapter 4, it says, In the process of time it came past that Cain brought, what kind of offering? An offering. Like, God, here's an offering. Here's a tip. Not 10%. Here's 1%. Or here's, it's not the first fruit, but it says of the fruit of the ground. And also, uh, Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat. And the Lord respected Abel's firstborn, first fruit offering. And the next scripture says he did not respect Cain's offering. 
And Cain was very angry and his countenance fell. And then it goes on to say, you can read in verse 7, that, that God is talking to, that, that it's saying that sin lies at the door. We're talking about an open door and wants to rule over you. And so we, we, there's a way that if you have this stronghold in your life that maybe it's, it's a greed problem or maybe it's this second point, maybe it's unbelief, maybe you just don't believe in the principle of tithing. The second point is unbelief. That uh, you, just, you just say, well, I'm not greedy, but I just don't believe in it because it was the Old Testament. I just showed you where God instructed Cain and Abel, which before that, who taught Cain and Abel? It was Adam and Eve. Actually, God instructed Adam and Eve about the principle of tithing. Long before the law, during the law, after the law in the New Testament, and still today. It's, and and I'm, not, I'm not preaching this, and I'm not telling you about this so that you can um, give the church more money. That's not what it's about at all. Anybody that knows me knows that's not my nature at all. I very rarely talk about this. In fact, if it's your first visit here or you recently come back to visit, we don't talk about this every Sunday. We hardly mention anything about giving. But I'm doing this so that you can experience the same blessing I've been experiencing since I was 28 years old. And many of you others, I've talked to people all the time and they say, I can remember the day that I made a decision for God, I closed the door to the enemy, and I made a decision to, to, to open to God and let Him bless my finances. Because I'm about to show you a scripture in just a second that it's going to blow your mind. But, but the two manifestations of lust of the eyes is greed. Secondly, it's unbelief. I just don't believe in it. I just don't believe in it. Let me show you Joshua chapter 6. Verse 19, and here Moses had died and the children of Israel were now being led by Joshua. Joshua had taken over and God said, Joshua, I want you to go in the first city, did you catch that? The first city, first born, first fruit, first city that I want you to conquer is Jericho. And he even told him how to do it. March around six times, don't say a word. After the seventh time, shout, blow the trumpet, the walls are going to come down. You know the story. And so, here he says in the instruction part, but when you get into that city, it was a very rich city. All of the silver, all of the gold and vessels of bronze and iron are set apart or consecrated to the Lord. They shall come into the treasury of the Lord. Why did God tell him that? Because he was going to conquer 31 cities, but this was the first one. God wants the first fruit. God wanted the first city to be his, and then he was going to bless the 30 other battles. But what did the children of Israel do instead? They could have eaten from the tree of life there, but they ate from the tree of sin again. And here's a, a chapter later, here's what happened. Israel has sinned, God said, and have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them, for they have even taken some of the accursed things. Because we know the story, there was a man named Achan who decided he got his eyes on the gold and silver and he just snuck a little bit for himself in the tent. And so God is holding them accountable now. And he says, they've taken some of the accursed things and have both stolen and deceived. First point was greed. Second point was unbelief. And they have also put it amongst their own stuff. Listen, here's what the devil will try to do. He will try to talk you into stealing because I've studied the Bible over and over and over and over. And I promise you, when it comes to our test that we have when we receive our paycheck of giving back the Lord 10%, we have two choices. We can either steal it or we can return back what is His. I'm, I know this is a, a tough one and a gut punch, but I, you, know, you won't hear this at some of the mega churches but you'll hear it right here in this little church. And I hope you know that I love you, love you, love you so much. And I want you to be blessed. And that's why I preach this. Guess what? Thank you. I'll preach on, I'll preach on hell too. And you know, I'll preach on all the uncomfortable things of the Bible. I'll, I'll preach on the fun stuff too. But in this case, 
they had taken. Now look at this next scripture. And, and I hear people say sometimes, well, you know, tithe, it's not in the New Testament, but it's in there eight times. And by the way, the virgin, virgin birth is mentioned only two times. Yet we believe in that, don't we? So just to say, well, only eight times is not... No, it's, it's a biblical principle. And so I want to uh, move on to uh, Malachi chapter 3. From the days of your fathers, and I could have backed up and started in verse 6 because verse 6 says, I am the Lord, I don't change. But verse 7 says, yet from the days of your fathers, you've gone away from my ordinances, which what does the word ordinance mean? Ordinary principles. You've gone away from my ordinary principles and have not kept them. Look, return to me, God says. Return to me and I will return to you. And you said, in what way shall we return? And I want you to watch how many times he uses this word. He says, do not rob God. And then he goes on in verse 8. Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, in what way have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings. Now, I want you to notice something because a lot of people say, if you don't tithe, God's going to curse you. That's not true. God says you are cursed. With it. The one that's going to curse you is the enemy. God's just going uh, to step aside if, if you open this door to the enemy. You are cursed with a curse for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. He goes on to say, bring, again, you can't give, you can only return, return or bring all the tithes into the storehouse. Which, by the way, that's the local church. I, I'm, I don't want to ruffle feathers, but it's not a missionary. It's not some TBN evangelist. It's not some mega ministry. It's the local storehouse. I, don't, I told someone the other day, I don't go to Walmart and write my check out to Kroger. And, right? And so, uh, bring the tithes into the storehouse, the local storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Do you, do you get fed every week? I hope so. I hope so. There's good food in the house if you're hungry. Well, now it says, but God says, test me or try me in this. The only place in the scripture where God says, test me. Because in every other situation, God says, don't test me. But in this one situation, he says, test me and I will prove to you, says the Lord of hosts, I will open the windows of heaven and pour you out such a blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. And then it goes on to say, and, like, if you call right now, <laughs> and, this is the part I'm talking about, you, I will re rebuke the devourer. So when Satan comes to attack your house, God's going to say, not today, Satan. Some of you have the shirt. Not today, Satan. I'll rebuke the devourer for your sakes so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground. Now, it's not to say that you'll never have a challenge or you'll never have an attack or you'll never have, but in general, it's like, you know, you, up, down, in general, God's going to see that you're blessed. And I promise you, you just heard a testimony from my son and daughter-in-law. Uh, God, God does not lie. And so, uh, so here's the deal. This scripture, it says rob. I, I want you to, to, to notice this. Do you know the difference between theft and robbery? Theft is stealing something from someone. And they may not be home. Robbery is taking something or stealing something from someone and their home. God says, you've robbed me. So I'm going to say something very strong, but is it robbery? Are we robbing God when we come to church with the money that He's blessed us a job with and we walk into the church and we walk right by the tithe buckets and we keep it in our pocket and go out and spend it on something else? I'm... That's ouch, but I'm just trying to open our eyes to something. Because God's in the house. And you say, well, okay, I'll get out of that one. I got a loophole. I just won't come to church. Guess what? God's in your house too. Because God is everywhere. You can't get away from God. 
You can't get away from God. The only place I think God chooses not to be is in hell. And even Jesus went down there for three days and preached to him. So God can be anywhere, anytime, any place. But I, I, I'm being strong, but I want, I want this to be a life-changing message for you if you'll allow God to speak to your heart. Uh, so the two manifestations are greed, unbelief. The third one is fear. And I'm closing with this story. But this is uh, really the story of Judas. And Luke, Luke 22 says, Then Satan entered Judas. This whole series about getting free, and we're talking about demons that can enter into people. Here's proof of it. And what was, what, what did Ju Satan entered into Judas? What did Judas do to open the door to facilitate that? Well, a few things. One, he betrayed Jesus, as we see in this passage. But I want you to move on to the passage in John, the next one. And did you know that Judas Iscariot was Jesus' treasurer? He kept the money. And six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany where Lazarus, who was, had been dead, whom he'd raised from the dead, uh, there, he, they made a supper, you know, and Martha served, but Lazarus was one of those who sat at the table with him. Then Mary took a pound, a pound of very costly oil of spikenard, anointed the feet of Jesus. She worshipped Jesus, wiped his feet. By the way, tithing is one of the highest forms of worship you can do. Tithing and offering is one of the highest forms of worship you can do. And wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the fragrance of the oil. And one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, who would betray him, said, why was this fragrant oil not sold for 300 denarii, which is a one year's wages, and given to the poor? And he said this, John said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had taken, had the money box, and used it to take what was put in it. In other words, he took out of the offering bucket and used it for his own needs. And... You know, do we do the same thing when we take God's first hundred that He gives us, or first ten, or first one, or whatever it is, and we use it for what we think we need because we have a fear that it's not going to work out financially. If I give God His part, my math says it won't work out. But if we trust God, if we trust God, and we close the door, God will do miraculous things. Amen? Amen? So I want to close with a, a word of prayer and a, a, basically a story. Uh, I, I had so many stories. I just ran out of time. But this story really applies here because my uh, family and I, years ago when I was a teenager, my dad took us to an Easter brunch. And I'll never forget this Easter brunch. Anybody ever been to Easter brunch where the, the spread is just ridiculous you can and you're you know as a teenage boy I'm telling you I can put it away I still can do some damage how many of you know but we went to this brunch and my brother and I we were eating everything in sight and my sister and my mom and my dad we were eating and there was this beautifully carved chocolate Easter bunny at the end of the I mean it was about three feet high well my brother and I decided it would be fun to take that Easter bunny and take it home and eat on it all week long. So we took that, we, 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 we were just so stuck, we had been fed so well, but yet just a little greedy, took that Easter bunny, took it home, put it in our room, we were so proud of it. My dad comes walking in and sees that Easter bunny, says, what have you done, son? And uh, we said, well, Dad, you know, it's, it's, uh, they said it's all you can eat, and this is an edible food, and yes, it's three foot tall, but in, in our mind, this is food, and it's a buffet, so therefore, we took it, and we justified it in our mind. But in my father's eyes, it was stealing. Didn't matter what I thought. What mattered is in my father's eyes, it was stealing. So, we drove back to the 
hotel that had the brunch and gave them back their Easter bunny and apologized <laughs> and was very, you know, humbled. And I'm so glad my dad did that because in his eyes it was stealing. In our eyes it was justified. And sometimes with the money that God gives us, we make up our own reasons. Our, in our eyes, it's justified. But in our Father's eyes, it's theft. And I know this is a hard message and a real punch. And we don't do this every week. But I had to share this about the lust of the eyes. Don't let greed, don't let fear, don't let unbelief guide your decisions. Can we go to the Lord in prayer? And I just want to ask you that today. And you don't have to raise your hand right now. Really, if you, if you really feel convicted and this is an open door in your life, you can make a decision that I made when I was 28 years old. That I, When we got married, I told Amy, we will never, ever be late on God's tithe. And God has taken care of us tremendously. And so, if you will make that same decision, we'll never be late and, and we'll give him the first fruit. The first, as soon as I get my paycheck, the first 10%. It's easy. You can do it online. You can put it in the bucket. I, I pray that, that if, you, if, you, if you want to close this door in your life, all you have to do is make a decision today to start doing this. It's, it's not hard. And if you do the first 10%, somehow that other 90% ends up being 150% or 180% or 1,000%. I promise you that. And many people are nodding their head right now. So that's one thing. And I pray that God will speak to your heart and you will act accordingly on your own volition. Secondly, if there's anybody in here today that you would say, man, I don't know Jesus like I should. I don't have that personal relationship. He feels like he's far away. And I need to make that right first. If you could, I will ask you just to slip your hand up because... God says if you, uh, if you acknowledge Him, He will acknowledge you. And so if there's anyone in here that would say, I need to make my relationship right with Jesus Christ, we're not going to embarrass you. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Just say, that's me. I need to make my... Yes, thank you. I need to make my life right with Christ. Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I just want to pray a prayer with you to make that right. Because the Bible says that where your heart is... That's where your treasure will be. Where, uh, sorry, it says where your treasure is, there your heart will be. So if you treasure God's things, then your heart will act accordingly. Father, I just thank you for all the hands that were raised. And in raising the hands, they acknowledge that they need to make their relationship right with you. So in your own way, those that raise your hands, I pray you pray a silent prayer today or a spoken prayer that says, God, I need you. I want to make things right with you. I want to restore my relationship with you. Forgive me for the times that I've walked away and I want to uh, be in your presence and I want to make things right. And I just thank you that you're a God of grace and mercy and you come back and uh, just forgive me of my sins. I confess my sins before you and I want you to come into my heart, Jesus, today in Jesus' name. Amen. Can we give God some praise today? Hey, I want to thank you for coming out today, and uh, I'll be back in this back room if you need special prayer, or if you want to, uh, if you're, if you're a, uh, someone that's a guest today, I would love to bless you with a gift back here. Next week, we're going to talk about destroying the spirit of fear. Many people have been gripped with the spirit of fear with this COVID crisis and everything else, but how many of you know that it does not come from God, that God gives us the victory over the spirit of fear? Hey, I love you. Y'all have a blessed day. Give somebody a handshake or an air bump or a high five on your way out. God bless you. Have a great day.